take a look at this part. So this was a scrap piece from some sort of an electric car project that a customer uh, had or bought, and they want us to eliminate most of the weight by machining a lot of this extra material here away. So how do you hold it? That's the question. Uh, as an aside, this is for a really cool project. It's going to be a 400 horsepower motorcycle that weighs 400 pounds, hence why they want this material removed. This is going to be for an oil tank for the bike. Uh, photos and more information at the end about the project, but pretty darn cool. It's an electric hybrid system, so it'll have a V-twin engine as well as a uh, AC electric motor with 100 foot-pounds of torque. I'm not a bike guy, but this sounds bonkers. I think they're looking for a eight second quarter mile. So take a look at this part and now hit pause, hit timeout. You go think about how you would fixture this. This is pretty weird. Okay, you've got your way. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna run this. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So you've got right now one, two, three, four holes. You gotta use those holes. You've also got a perimeter edge right down here. This is what I've come up with. We use the iron worker, shear off a six inch piece of aluminum. We machined six little spacer blocks that are about 930 thou tall. That's the distance between the proud edge here and the bottom edge there. This will set in on those blocks so we can clamp down, creating a really good connection straight through here around this band. My concern is, do we have, uh, are we gonna have resonance or harmonics or just loose fixturing here? So we added three Mighty Bites. I don't care if these don't do a ton. All I want them to do is provide some amount of resistance here. Let's put this thing together. I think you're gonna see it's, it's pretty solid. We need some washers for underneath those cap screws, some uh, 10 thou or so stainless steel shim stock. Who's ever screwed up a mighty bite before? Sometimes these things are just weird. In my, we used to use them a ton in the old company I ran. Um, and I don't know why, even if you follow the directions to offset the hole, in this case it's by 308 from your clamp surface. Uh, every once in a while, you know, they just don't work great, so you just shim it. No big deal here. It's annoying when you do it on a production fixture. Okay. Love it. The knock test. Folks, it's solid. Let's go set her up. We got it squared up about seven thou. Um, I'm not 100% sure that this space is perfect. And this job has actually got one really easy element to it, which is we're only worrying about removing material here. It's the surface finish isn't too important. They're gonna do some hand finishing and it's also an interior surface. Put our last two screws in now that we got those holes drilled.
some, it's actually the next day I let that job run while uh, we were out to dinner. And I'm really happy with how that worked, really happy with how the fixture worked. Um, that tool, I mean, that's a good amount of stick out. That's a two flute um, tool. Again, a Lake Shore Carbide, really happy with how it looked. This is not a mold making job. It's a material relief job. We bid it as such. So yeah, there's some scalloped finishing. That's just fine. So super happy. Let's flip it over now. And we've got a machine to the tapered holes and then we're done. Yep, as expected, um, need to come back and clean this up. Instead of using a ball end mill though, uh, we've got some of these 90 thou bull mills from Lakeshore Carbide right here. Let's model that up in Fusion and use that. These are great for one main reason, which is that um, it wouldn't be a, uh, so much of an issue here, but because they don't come to a bald center, you don't have that surface footage problem like you do with a ball end mill. And in this case, what will help is the fact that because it's just a radius in the corner, we can clean up that pocket closer to the square floor. Take a look at that. What I love about that, and you know, that was only a few minute uh, toolpath, is that's what you can do when you need to do it. That's friggin' awesome. Super happy. Again, one a few lessons to take away. Don't overbid a job. The finished interior here was okay with it being scalped. It was about weight removal. I have to say I am pretty proud, and I do think that the uh, exterior holes that we machined there focus you. Um, do look pretty good. And what else am I gonna mention? Take your time to fix your stuff. Building that fixture wasn't hard in the end. Just had to think about it. So taking that extra minute didn't really cost that much either. There's a really good lesson here, which is adaptive tool paths. I did this lights out, I, I left the shop. I'm not willing to do that with a 3D operation that may crash or chip load that tool that could bump it out of the fixture, could chip the uh, actual end mill and it could really wreak havoc on a part like this. So by doing an adaptive first, and then a finish, it takes more time, but who cares, I'm not here. So, hope you guys enjoyed, hope you guys learned something. As always, I appreciate the thumbs up in the comments. Take care, see you next Wednesday.